Hi guys! Welcome back to the channel and if you come from my previous video about all of the things guinea pigs need then an extra big hello! We're back and today we're talking about all the things guinea pigs don't need. Navigating all of the products available for guinea pigs can be a nightmare, especially knowing that there's lots of unsuitable products and potentially dangerous things out there that simply shouldn't be on the shelves or available to buy online. Bearing this in mind, I'm gonna run through the 10 things that your guinea pig don't need. Now some of them are okay occasionally and they can be down to the individual owners. I'm going to explain why I don't think they're necessary and then there are other things that are just definite no-nos and we should avoid at all costs. So hopefully you'll find this video useful and it will help stop you wasting money or wondering whether your guinea pigs actually need that thing. First up is something that many new owners are led to believe their guinea pigs need and that is salt and mineral licks. I've definitely fallen for these in the past and they are basically either white or coloured strange shape things with a little bit of plastic to attach to the cage and they claim to have either salt or some other sort of mysterious minerals that your guinea pig needs. Truth is they are basically just a gimmick to make money and they are completely unnecessary. They could also be harmful to your guinea pig's health if they eat too much of it. So if you have fallen into the trap of buying one of these then don't feel bad, it's easily done, just take it out the cage and don't go buying any more. Next up is another product you'll find on a lot of pet store shelves and online as well and I'm thinking of those little individual wood chews that can be just laid around in the bottom of the cage. They're usually quite decorative, they can be shaped like little fruits and painted bright colours and whilst they're not necessarily harmful what's wrong with these is that they convince owners into thinking they're necessary for wearing down their guinea pig's teeth. And it's this that is a complete lie. Guinea pig teeth are worn down by hair hay and grass and the silicates within them. And it's the back teeth where the important wearing down is needed. The incisors sort of overlap each other and as your guinea pig chews the incisors just wear each other down. So occasionally nibbling at a piece of wood is not going to do anything at all for wearing their teeth down. And for me I know that my guinea pigs would completely ignore this sort of thing. Which brings us on to another point and that's that they kind of clutter up the cage, especially if you've not got that much floor space having random wooden chews laid around can get in the way of your guinea pigs running laps for exercise. So I think having decorative hanging ones that you can put up on the side of the cage is completely fine. Just don't be misled into thinking that your guinea pigs need these to wear their teeth down. At number three we have various vitamin products. Now I'm thinking extra vitamin C in the form of tablets, liquid, stuff you can put in their water and multivitamin products as well. And a lot of owners can be told that their guinea pigs need extra vitamin C because they can't make their own and without it they'll get scurvy. And hearing about the symptoms of scurvy which include bleeding gums, aching joints and hair loss sounds pretty scary so it's easy for us to believe that they need this extra vitamin C. And whilst it's true that our guinea pigs can't make their own vitamin C, in reality with a healthy diet they can get all they need from their pellets and their fresh food alone. Even food like grass and hay has small amounts of vitamin C in. And then you've got things like red pepper which have loads of the stuff in. I think they need to only eat 1 16th of a red pepper to get all the vitamin C they need for that day. So taking all these sources into account it's highly unlikely you're going to run into any problems. And you could argue that they can't have too much vitamin C. However, if they do have a lot of it, it can cause problems with their bladder and their kidneys. So if you feed your guinea pigs the right things, then I wouldn't bother getting extra vitamin C unless you have maybe a pregnant female, a much older piggy or an unwell piggy. In those cases, you might choose to feed some extra vitamin C supplement in case they're not getting all of the vitamin C they need from their food. And as for other vitamins, you can get bad side effects from having too many of these, so I would avoid the multivitamin products. At number four we have grooming products. So in my last video I spoke about nail clippers, scissors, but you might notice that in addition to these are all sorts of sprays, wipes and powders that you can get for your guinea pigs. These usually involve adding some sort of scent or cleaning solution or insecticide to your guinea pigs fur and they're just not necessary. Despite the amount our guinea pigs poo they are good at keeping themselves clean and the natural oils on their hair helps keep it clean too. Even long-haired piggies can keep themselves 
house clean so long as you step in every now and again with the scissors and trim around that problem hair around their bottom. And as for the products aimed at parasites, well guinea pig mites are usually host specific, meaning they can only survive properly on live guinea pigs and they're unlikely to just turn up out of nowhere. And if they do, then you need to look at using products that will be recommended by your vet, such as Zeno 450, which contains ivermectin. These are usually little pipettes and you drop some of the solution behind their ears, the ivermectin soaks into your guinea pig skin and kills off the mites or the lice that way. The insecticidal products might help with fleas like off other animals, but if your guinea pig has a genuine guinea pig lice or mange mite infestation, you need to be using the ivermectin. Other things like the deodorizing sprays or the cleaning wipes might be okay to use in problem areas on occasion, especially if the only other alternative is a bath, which is quite stressful for our guinea pigs, but they definitely shouldn't be viewed as an essential supply for your piggies. At number five, we have unhealthy treats. Now you walk into any pet shop with a decent supply of guinea pig items and treats are probably the most common product. And they range from more healthy looking things like hay cookies to suspect things like fruit drops or yogurt drops. And it's when they start getting further away from natural looking foods that we should start being a little bit concerned. Unhealthy treats usually also have a long list of ingredients. They might contain additives and have lots of sugars in them. Sometimes they'll even have unsafe things such as nuts and seeds. I'm thinking of those bars where it looks like loads of seeds stuck together with honey. They're just not healthy. And if eaten, they might put off our guinea pigs from eating their healthy hay, pellets and vegetables. Also, in my experience, because yes, I have given my guinea pigs unhealthy treats going back, they've all been there. In my experience, they just aren't bothered about less natural unhealthy looking treats. So you don't have to feel guilty for depriving your guinea pigs of these. The best treats you can give them are their fresh vegetables and fresh forages. At number six, we have alfalfa hay slash pellets. Now, a lot of new owners will be told that their young guinea pigs need alfalfa hay because it contains more calcium and proteins, which help with growth. Makes sense. However, on the flip side, alfalfa hay shouldn't be given to adult guinea pigs because these extra proteins and calcium can cause health problems. So it gets a little bit confusing to know what's best, especially if you've got young and adult guinea pigs living together. Do you get Get them a separate pellet? Do you get alfalfa hay just for the young ones and divide them off so they can eat it on their own? My advice is not to overcomplicate things and don't go out of your way to source a special alfalfa hay or alfalfa based pellet. If you do want to give alfalfa, you can get those little alfalfa hay cubes. And if you've got younger piggies, just give them a hay cube now and again. Or if you've got both, you can take out the younger piggies for some lap time or floor time and give them a few alfalfa cubes then. Or just don't bother. There's no proof that alfalfa hay makes any significant difference to growing piggies. And personally, I sort of think it's one of those things that's passed from owner to owner verbally, and it's eventually found its way on the internet and is believed as gospel, something that must happen. So if you want to provide alfalfa for your younger piggies, alfalfa cubes are just fine. Or don't bother, so long as they've got an otherwise healthy diet with lots of good haze, pellets and fresh vegetables, they should be perfectly fine. Number seven and eight are some definite no-no products. And number seven is leads and harnesses. I cannot believe these are still available for guinea pig owners to buy. And it genuinely makes me angry. Under no circumstances is it safe for guinea pigs to wear a lead or a harness. Guinea pigs are fragile animals. Their backs in particular are not strong, they're not flexible, and being pulled on a lead could do serious damage, whether that's their owner pulling them or them pulling on the lead in an effort to get away. And you can't walk guinea pigs. It's far more enjoyable to set up a safe secure pen, like a playpen inside or a run outside. Put loads of fun things in there for them to explore and let them do it in their own time. This is also the best way for them to gain confidence around you naturally and help you form a bond with your new piggies. So if you've bought a lead or a harness, then get rid of it, put it down as a mistake and don't buy any more. 
Number eight is those plastic balls. And the same logic applies here as it does for the leads and harnesses. You usually see these advertised for hamsters, but they are also available for guinea pigs. And whether you've got either a hamster or a guinea pig or any other pet for that matter, don't put them in a plastic ball and make them run around on the floor. If you think about it, it's pretty horrible. You're putting them in a plastic thing where they can't see properly where they're going, they've got no food, no water, they bump into things which might cause injury, they might get their little toes stuck in the air holes, and it's just a very stressful experience for them. I used to have hamsters going back and we used to put them in balls and when I think about it now I just think it's it's just horrible. So if you were thinking about getting a ball, whether it's for a hamster or a guinea pig, then please don't do it. Moving on, and at number nine, we have metal hay holders. Now this covers a few different products. Firstly, I'm thinking of those balls that are like a, a silver color and they've got a little chain hanging off them. You can stuff them full of hay and the idea is your guinea pig gets the hay out. Now these seem fine, but unfortunately there are several sad stories on the internet where guinea pigs have got their heads stuck in these. Most of the time they've been okay because their owners got to them in time. However, you just don't want to risk that happening to your guinea pigs. So if you have one of those sort of wire balls, then I would just take it out of the cage and don't use it again. One of the other products I'm thinking of is the wire hay racks, the ones that sort of hinge together and they open maybe so far and they've usually got little hooks on to put onto the side of the cage. Now these ones, again, they look okay. However, there are stories of guinea pigs hurting themselves, trying to get in and out of them. And even a really sad story where someone's guinea pig lost their life because of this hay rack. So whatever style hay rack you've got, just take a moment to think, is that completely safe? Is there any way this could go wrong? And guinea pigs like to get in there. They will try and get in their hay racks because it's their instinct to get in the hay and burrow. That's what they like to do. So think about how your guinea pig is going to use it, whether they're going to try and jump inside and whether it's completely safe for them to do that. If you have any concerns, then go for a different option or just have the hay loose on the floor. Floor. And personally, this is one of the reasons why I only ever use hay loose on the floor. Or if I put it in things, it's like a toilet roll tubes, which are completely fine. Or those little wooden log rolls that you can get with the rosewood treats inside. So I avoid hay racks completely and just have loose hay, which I think the guinea pigs enjoy more as well. At number 10, we've got bedding to avoid, which covers some different bedding types, including wood shavings. Firstly, if you get wood shavings, they are not the same as sawdust. Sawdust is that super fine material that's okay for some other animals, but it's not safe for guinea pigs. And if you get the wood shavings, they should be dust extracted. But a lot of the time, they can still be quite dusty. So if you see your guinea pig sneezing and coughing when you replace the shavings and you're worried about it affecting their lungs, you might want to choose to go for a different bedding. With wood shavings as well, you should avoid cedar and pine. Or if it's pine, make sure it's kiln dried as this takes out some of the dangerous natural chemicals and odors that are in there. As for other beddings, paper and litter are other options, but just make sure it's from a reputable brand and it's marketed at guinea pigs. You don't want to be getting cat litter, for example. Some people use puppy pads, but these should always be under another layer of substrate they should be the absorbent layer only and they shouldn't be out in the open because our guinea pigs can tend to nibble on them and it's not safe for them to ingest them. For me, I think fleece is one of the safest beddings and if you're interested in learning more about how I keep fleece and the cage behind me clean and how I use waterproof pads in there, then I will pop up my cleaning routine video for you to go and check out. But that is everything for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I hope you learned something new. If you did, then drop us a like, drop us a comment below. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.